Welcome to Home Bakery Day. Today we're talking about frosting. What kind of frosting does not melt in hot weather? In summer, everyone deals with this globally, but if you live in South Africa like me or in other hot countries, then this is a total disaster, even in months like spring and autumn. So today we're talking about how you can maybe even uh, make changes to your frosting recipe you already have to make it last better at hot temperatures, and you'll get some ideas of different kind of frostings and things you can try out. But there is a solution, I promise. <laughs> I'm in South Africa, so I promise you there are solutions for this. And I'm so excited to share it with you guys today. Welcome, everyone. Um, this is Home Bakery Day, where I answer one specific question related to a home bakery business, um, either to improve your baking or to help you get consistent orders in your business. And it's great to see all of you here. Right, so let's get into the first thing. With frosting, you have to first of all consider the different ingredients that are in frosting. All of them have different melting points, and that is where the drama begins. Okay, so you need to understand this. And I have gone and searched in length uh, on Google for all the different melting temperatures of different kinds of ingredients. So let's start with that. Chocolate melts at 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. So for this reason, ganache is out of the question, completely out of the question, because chocolate melts very, very quickly. I mean, if, I'm sure that you know, if you put chocolate in your mouth, it melts. And that's 36 degrees, uh, our body temperature. So if you are looking at temperatures over 30 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside, everything is just going to melt and slide away. Okay, so ganache is not a good option. Um, the next one, butter. So many frostings, frostings, frostings are based on butter, right? Like American buttercream, for example. So many other frostings contain butter. Italian meringue buttercream, Swiss, mer Swiss meringue buttercream, all of them contain butter. And butter actually does not have a very high melting point. It is 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. That's not very high. So if you want to have a great shot at a frosting that doesn't melt, butter, you can't have lots of butter in your frosting. That's just not going to work. Um, and I mean, I'm sure you know, if you, if you bake with butter, you leave it at room temperature because it's already very soft at room temperature, right? So it's not just about the melting point. Things are already soft at room temperature, some ingredients, right? So that's the next, that's um, butter. The next one is shortening. Shortening is different though. Shortening has a higher melting point. It's 115 degrees Fahrenheit or 46 degrees Celsius. So that is significantly higher. We'll talk about how you can use this to your advantage a bit later on in this video. Okay, now cream. Cream is a tough one. I searched high and low to find the melting temperature for cream, but I know that it does melt at room temperature if you leave it out there long enough. Cream loves to be cold. I even found this study where they compared um, the results. If you whip cream at colder temperatures as opposed to like warmer room temperatures and you get more volume um, at colder temperatures and cream just behaves very nicely when it's really cold. But when you leave it at room temperature, it becomes extremely soft and even melts. I don't know the exact temperatures. Unfortunately, I searched long and I just couldn't find it. Right now, gelatin. Many frostings contain gelatin as well, just to help stabilize it. But gelatin actually does not have a very high melting point. Um, it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. So once again, if it's a hot day, it's going to be a disaster. Everything is going to go soft and slip and slide. Not a good solution. But agar, agar, on the other hand, which is like, uh, it's made from seaweed. You get it in a powder as well. It's like a substitute for gelatin that's safe for, for vegans and vegetarians. So, um... Yes, because gelatin is made from animal hooves. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you're grossed out, but anyway, yes. But agar agar is phenomenal. It only melts at 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 85 degrees Celsius. That is super, super high. So you can use agar agar um, in, you know, to substitute gelatin. And this will make, give, give you a much firmer result. But you do need to be careful that you don't overdo it. Um, because otherwise it can be very solid and like a, a really intense solid jelly because it, um, and, and yeah, so you just really need to be careful, especially because if you eat jelly, for example, that's made with agar agar, just like jello, you know, red jello or whatever, 
then it won't melt in your mouth because it only melts at 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 85 degrees Celsius. So it, it changes the mouth feel of things if you sub gelatin for agar agar. Okay. Right. Now let's talk about all the different frostings. Now that we know how ingredients react to temperature. American buttercream. This is the classic one where you just cream your butter for like five minutes till it's really pale and then you add a ton of icing sugar. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of American buttercream because I just think it's too sweet and sickly. I just I just don't like it. Even if you whip it a lot, I, I still don't like it. My husband likes it, but I don't. Um, right. With American buttercream, because such a giant amount of the or such a huge ratio of the recipe is butter it will absolutely melt <laughs> at room temp or on a hot a hot day it will completely melt so this is not a good solution at all don't use american buttercream um, unless you live like in norway or something where it's really cold most of the time um, it's not a good solution then swiss meringue buttercream swiss meringue buttercream is already a bit more stable because it contains egg whites that have been cooked to a certain temperature and if you cook an egg white it's solid right so that helps um, but it's not it, it will still because there's a lot of butter in there it will still slide and melt at a hot temperature and this is where things get interesting if you use Italian meringue buttercream that is a lot more stable because with Italian meringue that you make first and then you beat butter into that Italian meringue, you use a sugar syrup that you make on the stove and you cook that sugar syrup up to hard boil stage, which is like 121 degrees Celsius. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but you cook it um, until it can make like hard candies, basically. And hard candies don't melt when it's a hot day out, right? That solid substance of, you know, to where the sugar has been boiled gives you a lot of stability in your frosting. So Italian meringue buttercream is more stable at hot temperatures, but it still won't save you on a super hot day. If it's like, you know, 36 degrees out, which is, you know, like 100, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, then it's not going to it's not going to be enough. It won't cut it. But because we now know that shortening has a higher melting point of 115 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is 46 degrees Celsius, you know, if you live in Saudi Arabia that might not be a high enough melting point but in places like South Africa that is fine I think even in India it would have to be an extremely hot day and you would have to live in like a desert environment before it will before summer temperatures will go higher than that it's very rare that that will happen so in such a case you can substitute some of the butter in your Italian meringue buttercream with shortening and then you basically increase the melting temperature of your Italian meringue buttercream. But shortening doesn't have a fantastic flavor. So still keep some butter in there. But even if you just sub like half of it with shortening, that's already going to help you a lot. Okay, so that's what you can do there. Um, I have spoken about ganache. Ganache is not a good option. Chocolate melts at 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is not a good option unless it's winter. Then it's fine. Um, and then meringue. Meringue is interesting. If you make Italian meringue, that will also be a lot more stable at, at room temperature and on a hot day, especially. So you can use meringue. Sometimes people don't like using meringue because, um, because it can be a bit sweet, but Italian meringue is not as sweet as French or Swiss meringue in my experience. So you can give that a go. It doesn't have a tremendous amount of flavor, but you can get super high quality flavor extracts to flavor your, your Italian meringue, or you can be really clever and go to Passion for Baking Manuela. Um, she is such a sweet, fantastic, brilliantly talented um, home baker. And she has a bunch of different meringue recipes um, that you can check out. She has a recipe app. I bought it long ago and I'm so glad I did because the recipes are incredible. And she's got a salted caramel meringue, which is incredible. You have to taste it. So then you basically use caramelized sugar in your meringue. Um, but yes, you have to try it out. Go check out at Passion for Baking. Manuela is awesome. She's really sweet. You can even DM her if you have any questions about her app. But I highly recommend it. It's like $10 and it's so worth it because the recipes are such high quality. Okay, 
Next one, whipped cream. Whipped, whipped cream is very, very sensitive, as I said earlier. I don't know the exact melting point, but I'm sure you've seen. If you leave it at room temperature, it dies down. It dies a very slow death. But there is something, there's a little hack for this. And we have Lizzie to thank of um, from yourcupofcake.com. Yourcupofcake.com, she has this amazing little hack that she shares where you can add white chocolate pudding mix. Just two tablespoons of it to your whipped cream and then it holds its shape brilliantly and it doesn't melt or deflate as easily. I don't think it will be enough to save you on a super, super hot day, but it will help at least during spring and autumn. All right, so you can check out yourcupofcake.com and search for um, stabilized whipped cream and then you will find the exact ratios that you can use there. Uh, yeah, so that's awesome. Don't use vanilla pudding mix though because that adds a slight little yellow tint to your frosting, which is not ideal. Use the white chocolate pudding mix specifically. Cool. If you, of course, if you can't find anything else than vanilla, then rather use vanilla pudding mix than nothing at all. <laughs> and then you can just uh, add some kind of like a tiny tinge of purple coloring um, to balance out the yellowness and get a white frosting. Or you can add some kind of high quality white coloring like color mill. Color mill is really good. It works brilliantly for oil based um, or, or fat um, based things like frosting typically has quite a lot of fat in it and color mill blends seamlessly. With liquid colorings you often get like streaks and it looks a bit curdled and weird but color mill is a high quality coloring that doesn't do that. Okay, next one, flower buttercream or ermine buttercream is the other name for it. This is also a great one for spring, winter and autumn. That works great. You basically make a pudding. <laughs> you make a pudding with flour and sugar and water and then you whip butter into that. Um, the, the flower girl, Lindsay um, from Canada, she uses flower buttercream all the time. Um, it also flavors and colors extremely well. But it's not ideal, once again, for super hot days. Ermine frosting, unfortunately, won't save you. Okay, unless, once again, you, you substitute some of the butter in your frosting with shortening because shortening has a higher melting point. 115 degrees Fahrenheit or 46 degrees Celsius. So if you sub like half the butter in your flour buttercream or ermine frosting, then you have a much higher chance of actually having ermine frosting that holds together much better during hot summer days. Right. Next one, cream cheese frosting. Cream cheese frosting is a tricky one because it also contains butter, but cream cheese is also like typically a bit softer at room temperature. If you want, you can substitute once again half the butter with shortening to increase that melting temperature of your frosting. I don't like commercial or like traditional cream cheese frosting recipes because I find them way too sweet. What happens when you add butter to cream cheese um, and with sugar then it goes very very liquid and very sloppy very quickly so then bakers compensate for that in their recipes by adding a truckload of icing sugar i remember the one time i was watching a carrot cake recipe by cupcake Gemma, and i love cupcake Gemma, i love them um, but then they added for just like one eight inch carrot cake it was a tall one but still they, I think it had like four layers, but then they added 900 grams of icing sugar to the frosting for that one cake. And I was just like, whoa, that's way too much. So I don't like commercial cream cheese frostings. Um, if you like it, you know, then by all means, go ahead and then substitute half the butter with shortening and then you will have a more stable frosting. Um, that's your decision. I have a different cream cheese frosting. I knew that I wanted cream cheese frosting on my baked goods because it adds that lovely tang, right? It's such a delightful flavor. And I didn't want to use a traditional cream cheese frosting because of all the sugar and it's just too sweet and it just makes me like, you know, it feels like these, these I don't know what you call them, but these muscles like pull when you eat things that are that sweet. And I'm just like, oh, I hate it, I hate it. So I created my own cream cheese frosting over the years and there's a recipe for it on my blog. I thought about it for a long time. Should I share this recipe or shouldn't I? But I decided to go ahead and do it a couple of years ago. Um, but the link you can find, um, if you are watching on YouTube, the link is below this video. You can try out my frosting. Um, and if you are watching on Instagram, then you can go to my profile, click the Home Bakery Day links button, 
once you've clicked the link in my profile and then go to Comeback Red Day links and then the recipe will be there um, among those links. I think it will probably be in the baking section. So check that out. Give it a go. It's a super delicious frosting. You mix it with a hand mixer specifically. You can use it. There's, there's a different variation for layer cakes or for cupcakes. You have to change things slightly, but it is absolutely delicious and it contains like 75% less sugar than traditional cream cheese frosting. So you get a lovely flavor without that overwhelming sweetness. And it works brilliantly on any cake. Um, it basically just tastes like a very delicious tangy vanilla frosting. It doesn't taste like cream cheese. Um, and then also you can get a chocolate version of that as well. I'm sure the link is on that blog post um, for the chocolate version. Super, super tasty. So give that a go. Right, and then my last point here is that if you make wedding cakes then in summer months you won't be able to escape the fact that you need a cool truck like a cold truck i don't know what you call it in english really uh, but it's just like a truck in a, a fridge inside a truck <laughs> and don't worry about the costs of this let your clients pay for it with weddings people are usually more than happy to pay for whatever it takes to get everything picture perfect as they imagined it on imagined it on their wedding day. So charge them for it. Find out in advance um, how much it costs to rent a cooling truck, the smallest one they have available, um, so that you can transport it to, to that place where the wedding is. Um, otherwise, you're going to be so stressed out. Um, it's not fun to travel in your car with the cake, with the aircon blasting, and things are melting anyway because it's daytime and there's direct sunlight what's great about a cooling truck is it's completely closed so there aren't any windows no light can get in often it will be a cool day but sunlight shines through the window of your car and then things start melting and that's just not ideal so don't take that gamble don't deliver it yourself um, especially if it's like you know more than 30 minutes away in winter you can absolutely get away with this um, not in south africa because you get like random random hot days but if you live in the United States or in Canada or, you know, more northern parts um, or further south, then you might be able to get away with it. OK. Um, yes. So that's it. That's it for frosting. If you have any questions about frosting from everything we've talked about, then please tell me now. Otherwise, I'm going to sign off. And. Just so you guys know, last um, this week's voting between the two different questions was really, really tight. At first, um, the question about how you do your pricing and raise your prices, that one was ahead, quite far ahead by like 60 to 40 percent. But now, but in the last hour of voting, this question about what kind of frosting holds up well in hot weather um, support, you know, went past the other one, just like slightly, I think it was like 51% or 52%. So that's why I'm answering this question. But I do know that you guys want to know about pricing as well. So I'll talk about that in my next video. So we won't have a voting in this upcoming week. But um, yes, oh, margarine, I didn't talk about margarine. Thanks, Jagger, Jaggery Lane Bakes. Um, margarine is extremely soft. Um, it, well, it depends. If you're using a like plant-based margarine, like some plant-based margarines are really, really soft. Steer away from those. Um, I, but I have found that that vegan butters um, and margarines are more temperature sensitive than traditional butter. Um, so yes, if you use like hard, hard margarine, um, then I assume the temperature, the melting temperature is about the same as butter. That makes sense to me. And that is 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. So that's not very high. It's not going to help you if you sub the butter in your recipe for margarine. It will melt all the same. That's not going to change anything. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Okay, guys, so next week I will talk about pricing. And how you raise your prices and how to know if you are charging the right prices. Um, that's next week. And, oh, here's one. My go-to frosting for cupcakes, Sasha asks. That is my own unique cream cheese frosting that I that I've created over time. There's no butter in it, so it doesn't melt as easily. Um, I made this frosting and used it on cupcakes for our wedding day. It was 43 degrees Celsius that day. Don't you feel sorry for me? 
getting married on a 43 degree Celsius day. That's like over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it's like 104. It was so hot. But thankfully, I was incredibly in love, so I didn't mind as much. Um, so I used that frosting, my own unique vanilla frosting, on that day. And the cupcakes, the frosting on the cupcakes did not melt. So check out, go to, the link is below this video if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Instagram, go to my profile, click the link um, in my profile, click on Home Bakery Day links, and then my um, ultimate vanilla frosting recipe will be there. That is my go-to frosting. It's not overly sweet. It's got 75% less sugar, but it's extremely flavorful, smooth, luscious, delicious. Um, you will love it, honestly. Okay, um, I have to do a double barrel cake with all Bavarian filling, so I'm nervous about it being stable and not squishing between the layers. A handy trick that you can use. I saw this um, Lindsay from at the flower girl underscore. Um, she pipes a border with a star tip specifically, not a round tip. So frost your, your cake, thin layer of frosting. You can use Italian meringue buttercream that's more stable and sub half the butter with shortening to increase the melting point. And then thin layer of frosting on your cake and then put, in, put lots of it in a piping bag and pipe with like a very large star tip. Pipe a border around, all the way around the edge of your cake and then put the filling in the center. Whether that is custard, or um, you know, ganache or some kind of fruit filling or whatever. What I also actually like to do is just put put that border around, but then also in the center, put a nice dollop of, of your Italian meringue buttercream so that it holds up the cake layer and it doesn't weigh down so heavily on that soft filling. Um, just make sure it sets nicely in the fridge, the frosting sets nicely in the fridge before you add that filling in there. That's a great little trick for you. Okay, cool. Um, that is it for all the questions. Thanks so much guys for joining in. Um, once again, if you want to watch live on Instagram, it's every Wednesday this week. I messed up my routine a bit, but it, on, on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Central Africa time, you will be able to watch this video, um, and when I do it live and then I share all of these videos on YouTube as well. Um, not immediately. Sometimes I just need a bit of time to upload it there. Um, but I answer questions like this every week so that you can get more success with your baking, um, not have so many stressful mishaps and get more consistent orders in your business. I will see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye.